Next on Worcester News tonight, a man is facing charges in connection to a body found in Worcester. Prosecutors say the suspect was in the victim's apartment before his death. Plus, the city is looking into a new program, allowing business owners to apply for a tax credit if they open in a vacant storefront district. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. After a stretch of beautiful days, we now have rain and cooler temperatures and we are expected to see more showers tonight. Let's get a first look at our local forecast with meteorologist Chris Gloninger. I'm meteorologist Chris Gloninger. After a beautiful holiday weekend with temperatures into the 70s and 80s, we've seen a major change across New England. High in Worcester, only 57 degrees. Rain cooled air, a lot of clouds in place. It'll be a little while before we see a significant warm up across the area. Let's go right to tomorrow morning. The steady rain should be winding down. We have a lot of cloud cover around 46 degrees at 6 a.m. As we go a little bit deeper in the morning, we get up to about 50, 51, and then 56 degrees by lunchtime. You see at 1, we're nearing 60 degrees, and I think we get there as clouds begin to thin a little bit by the late afternoon. We may see a little bit of late day sunshine, but for the most part, we are socked in the clouds right through the evening. And you can see a few showers passing just to the south. We'll have to watch that closely. It's possible that they might try to come a little bit closer to Worcester during the evening hours and during the first part of our Thursday morning. Coming up in your 10 day forecast, we'll show you the days that could come close to 80 degrees. All of those details coming up in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Chris. A Shrewsbury man is in court today facing charges in connection to a body found in the city. Prosecutors say the victim was found last week and an arrest was made two days later. Prosecutors say the two men knew each other. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us live outside of court now with the latest. Olivia, Brittany. police say when they arrived, the man was already dead and had a broken neck and ribs. Prosecutors say Tony Sacco first lied to police and then admitted to attacking and kicking the victim. The family of John Reardon gets a good look at the man police charged in connection to the death of their loved one. Tony Sacco pled not guilty to multiple charges, including aggravated assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. It was determined that Mr. Reardon had a fractured nose, four fractured ribs, and a fractured neck. Prosecutors say Sacco and the victim were out drinking last Wednesday. When they returned to Reardon's home on Lake Avenue, prosecutors say Sacco found items he thought Reardon had stolen from him. According to court documents, the 38-year-old first lied to police about what happened, but later said he attacked Reardon. You have a defendant who can't handle his alcohol. He becomes violent. He admitted to after having pulled Mr. Reardon off the bed to kicking him in the side of the head and kicking him in the ribs which certainly lines up more with the injury suffered than simply being pulled off of that. Prosecutors asked for $50,000 cash bail. Defense attorney Blake Rubin says his client was the one who called police, and it doesn't fit the characteristics of someone who's guilty. My client, Mr. Sacco, was certainly hoping to be released on personal recognizance because uh, he has no funds available to make bail at this point. Uh, and at this point, it's very, it's unclear uh, what the cause of death is, and, but at this point, from my reading of the report, says no direct connection of my client uh, to the very unfortunate death of the victim in this case. Sacco is being held on $50,000 cash bail. He is due back in court on June 25th. Live in Worcester, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Worcester police are looking for a driver who hit a man and then took off. The hit and run happened Sunday night at the corner of Orient and Plantation Streets just before 1030. Police say a 53 year old was seriously hurt but is expected to survive. He was hit trying to cross the street while out for a run. One woman who lives nearby says she heard the impact and then saw a black vehicle speed away. Bleeding. Um, from his head and from his arm. His shoes got flown up, you know, flung up. He was like 20 feet, I guess. No, it was awful. I mean, the car sped up. My daughter almost got hit herself. The car took off, and it was a black, definitely a black car. And police are asking for anyone with information to call the Worcester Police Department. The Supreme Court ruled today a provision of an Indiana law should remain blocked. The law says the state may prohibit abortions motivated solely by race, sex, or disability. The law was signed three years ago by then Indiana Governor Mike Pence. Massachusetts Senator Harriet Chandler says Mass must take a firm stand and continue to be a leader. 
This seems to be a, a, a quick way to bring this issue of whether to support Roe v. Wade to the Supreme Court. Uh, we don't we don't see that happening. We want to make sure that Roe v. Wade is, is confirmed and supported. Uh, it's very important to the women who live in, in this state. And the Indiana law was blocked from going into effect by the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. The court, however, did say they would allow part of the law, allowing clinics to bury or cremate fetal remains to take effect. The city of Worcester is looking into participating in a new pilot program run by the state. It would allow business owners to receive tax credits if they open in an area certified as a vacant storefront district. Several streets in the city's downtown would be a part of it, and one business owner says it's something he would consider. Our Chandler Walsh is in downtown now and joins us with the details. Chandler. Olivia, the city says there are dozens of vacant storefronts in the in the Main Street area. Store owner Jimmy Kang says it's made, it's hurt his building and his business and made him think about leaving the city, but it's his persistence that keeps his business going. Vacant storefronts line Pleasant Street and Jimmy Kang's shop sits in the middle of it all. His store has been here for seven years and Kang has seen several neighboring businesses come and go. When people drive by and stuff, they see one store open, you know, there's no signs anywhere. Kang says the empty shops make it difficult for him to run his fashion clothing store. You got to figure out how to budget your store so it runs right, so you're not buying too many things. The city of Worcester is trying to fill the properties by creating a certified vacant storefront district through a new state program. After the city designates the district, businesses that will be occupying those vacant storefronts will be able to submit a request to the state for a small tax credit. The district would run along the Main Street corridor from the old courthouse to Hammond Street, where there are dozens of vacancies. That builds off of the North Main Street economic development strategy that we had, all the way to the new uh, transformative development initiative designation in Main South. So really bringing those two sections of Main, Main Street together. Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce President Tim Murray supports the plan. He says tax incentives could help entrepreneurs start businesses or expand to new spaces. We want to have conversations about destination retail, that people have a unique experience, can kind of stop at one store and maybe pop around some others. Kang has been trying to rent more space on Pleasant Street to develop the area and says the city needs to work with owners like himself. So that people that work in the city from outside the city understand to shop in the city. The vacant storefront district proposal is up for city council approval at tonight's meeting. The city says if all goes well, they're hoping to get approval from the state in the coming weeks. Businesses who participate could earn up to $10,000 in tax credits. Live in Worcester, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A historic building on Main Street in Worcester is set to undergo renovations. Worcester's Historical Commission approved the removal of its modern aluminum facade as part of a planned historic renovation. The Olympic Trophy Building was built in 1926 and is known for the trophy and sport goods businesses located there for several decades. Right now, the building has two retail businesses on the first floor, Garden Fresh Courthouse Cafe and a constable service. A new report looks into the possibility of removing fares on city buses. City Councilor Constantina Lukes is requesting the Research Bureau provides the council with their report. She says the Standing Committee of Public Service and Transportation would like to review it. Last week, the Research Bureau said the move to fare-free buses might actually improve operations for the Worcester Regional Transit Authority. City and state leaders and first responders gather at Worcester's McDonald's location this morning for the unveiling of their remodel. A flag raising ceremony and community donations kicked off the event on Shrewsbury Street. The restaurant donated $1,000 to North High School's Navy Junior ROTC and $2,000 to the Friends of the Mounted Police Unit and Box 4 Special Services. The redone restaurant features modern and contemporary decor and has close to 70 employees. To our At McDonald's, we also offer this thing called Archways to Opportunity, and um, where we help tuition assistance for college courses. English is a second language. Um, in fact, we have 15 employees in our three restaurants. We own Holden, Westboro, and here, and 15 are in the Archways to Opportunities for college education, tuition reimbursement, which is great. This business here, you know, reinvests in our community and. Uh, and I'm grateful for that. 
The restaurant's remodel is part of an international rollout at more than 2,600 McDonald's locations.